question are there postgraduate studies in New Zealand answer yes in fact I completed my master's degree in New Zealand for free this is all possible because of Health Workforce New Zealand funding. On my other video, I talked about postgraduate studying and on this video, I will specifically talk about uh, what funding is available, the application process, and overview of the courses. There is going to be a lot of information, so please make yourself comfortable, grab a pen, take some notes, details, up next. I have been wanting to create a video about this topic for a long time, but because of some DHB restructure, I was actually waiting for more information to become more available before I create this video. But anyway, for a bit of a background, on July 1, 2022, the New Zealand health system was reformed. The 20 district health boards were disestablished and their functions were merged into Te Fatu Ora, which now leads the day-to-day -day function of the system for the whole country. For now, let's just park that information to one side. So from 20 DHBs, we now have Te Fatu Ora. On the other side, we have Health Workforce New Zealand, specifically Health Workforce New Zealand Investing, Relationship and Purchasing. And this was also renamed as Health Workforce Directorate. And for your reference, HWNZ was renamed before the DHB structure. Health Workforce Directorate is a funding agency of Ministry of Health and they provide funding to DHBs, now Te Fatu Ora, through contract process. If this is the first time you're hearing about DHBs and Te Fatu Ora, I will show you an illustration shortly. But first, if we are just meeting, Kia ora, my name is Winibini Veronica. Welcome to the Little Cup from New Zealand to Australia, where I help people create better plans for their big move abroad. So if you want to plan better, please make sure to hit like and subscribe. Salamat po! Now, this is an illustration of DHBs in New Zealand, and this um, illustration is from Ministry of Health website um, back in 2018. So, as you can see here, previously we have different district health boards. So, for example, up north we have Northland DHB, and then as you go further down we have Waitemata, Auckland DHB, Counties Manukau DHB, and so on. And now with Te Fatu Ora, um, we have Te Fatu Ora Lakes, Te Fatu Ora Bay of Plenty, for example. And why am I sharing this information to you? Just to give you an idea where to find those uh, hospitals. Uh, those are specifically public hospitals as well. Um, if you're interested in applying in, in public hospital anyway. Now, I'll show you another photo. This is like a zoom out version of different DHBs, I guess. Um, the, the country is divided into different region. This is, I guess, in some way oversimplification, but this is the only map that I could find. Um, I don't like it because it just clumps South Island as South Island. Um, but just to give you an idea, within New Zealand, you have different regions. You have Northern region, Midland region, Central region, and South Island. So it's basically like um, having different regions in the Philippines as well. And by the way, I am from Region 4 of A, Calabar Zone, Mabuhay. The only reason why I'm trying to show this to you is just to give you an idea as well, especially if you're not really familiar about uh, New Zealand in, uh, in particular. So in my experience, I spent most of my 10 years living in the Midland region. And I completed my postgraduate degree uh, when I studied in Auckland. I also worked in Hawke's Bay for a little while, and that's in the central region. And I have enjoyed traveling to South Island for special occasions. Now, I'm showing you these photos just so we can put things into perspective. Specifically, when I get asked, you know, best place to live or work, because I really think there's not one straight answer, if I'm going to be honest, because you really have to consider your personal situation and your preferences. So, yeah. And just know that in the past, we have different district health boards. In uh, those different districts, there will usually be one big public hospital. And obviously, we cannot change the physical structure. So the actual public hospital, the building itself is still there. Um, but how, um, I guess, the organizational structure, that's uh, what changed. And that's why we have the photo order now. So after I became a New Zealand resident, I started looking at sponsorship and funding for further education and I initially started searching the NZNO website, which is a union for nurses here in New Zealand. And by the way, if you want more information about unions in New Zealand, I've created a video about that so you can check the info card above. Um, so yeah, this is just a screenshot of the page about scholarships and grants. However, in summary, when I was reading through this um, back in 2013, I realized that it was just four short courses. 
And what I wanted at that time was to complete a master's degree and, you know, get a job as a senior designated nurse. So I kept searching and eventually I found a PDF file about postgrad funding for nurses. Um, and I was working at an aged care facility when I applied and got approval for funding. And fortunately, when I moved to the public hospital, I continued with my study um, under that funding. During my time, the eligibility criteria in order to apply for postgrad funding may potentially vary depending on which DHP you're going to apply. Um, but as a general rule, you need to be a New Zealand citizen or resident, and you should be working at least 0.4 FTE. And the course that you enroll should uh, end up in a qualification, for example, a postgraduate certificate, a postgraduate diploma, or master's degree. So again, during that time, at least in my experience, it didn't matter if I wasn't working in a DHP to begin with because that funding was allocated per district health board. In terms of when you can apply for funding, the application is only open for a short period of time. So usually it's around mid-August to first week of October, and that's application for the next school year. If you are watching this video outside of that period, chances are the application has already closed. But if you still want to hear about my experience, then I'll keep on talking. So during my time, depending on which DHB you are applying, they may ask you for other requirements such as creating a career plan and PDRP. Now, PDRP deserves a separate video, so I will not talk about that. While I was working in an aged care facility, I applied for funding in a DHB by completing a career plan with my manager and completing the application form which included the course I intended to enroll on. I enrolled to the course and got approval for funding. When I moved to a public hospital, I had to complete a PDRP to maintain my eligibility for funding. And again, this requirement is not universal to all DHPs. Some DHP may not require you to complete PDRP in order to apply for funding. Anyway, for my first year, I studied part-time while working a rostered shift of 0.8 FTE, which is 8 shifts a fortnight. I studied one paper per semester, and at the end of that year, I gained 60 credits and completed a postgraduate certificate for health sciences. For your reference, the funding that I received included covering the course fees, training release time, and travel and accommodation subsidy. So for the course fees, that is full payment of tuition fees and compulsory fees charged by a tertiary education provider. That payments happens behind the scene. I didn't get that money. The tertiary provider got paid directly from HWNZ. Training release time. So in a semester, there's about four to six face-to-face -face study or online study days. And I received training release time to attend. So this means that for the study days, I didn't have to use my annual leave or regular study days. This comes on top of that. And then for travel and accommodation subsidy, this is available for courses which are not available locally. Um, so for example, for my first year, the study days occurred in the city where I was living. And then for my other paper, everything was online. So I didn't get any travel or accommodation subsidy. However, for my second year, I had to travel to Auckland. So to be considered for travel accommodation funding, the applicant's place of work must be over 100 kilometers from their place of study. If granted, the maximum amount is $910 per semester. When I did travel for my second year, it was very helpful to have that travel and accommodation subsidy. I still had to spend my own money for travel and accommodation, but like I said, better to have a subsidy than not. So for my second year, I completed another 60-point credits and completed a postgraduate diploma. There are situations where you cannot use this funding for other course-related costs, for example, consumable items, textbooks, postage, courier fees, prerequisite courses, paper, payment to friends, family for accommodation, meals and refreshment costs, any claims without legible legitimate receipts or adequate supporting documentation, situation where the trainee is mentored within the workplace during normal work role or hours. I think the last one, um, it applies specifically for those who are on nurse practitioner pathway if I'm not mistaken. If you are enjoying this video, then please don't forget to hit like and subscribe and turn on your notification bell so you will know when I upload new videos just like this one.
And if you want to support the channel, click that super thanks icon at the bottom of the video or simply buy me a coffee by clicking the link below. Alternatively, a big thumbs up always goes a long way. Salamat po! For my postgraduate diploma, I completed a specialty course and I focused on acute stroke management because I was working in an acute stroke unit at that time. Having completed my postgraduate diploma along with my nursing experience, I got a job as a clinical nurse specialist for acute stroke and rehabilitation in New Zealand. Now, there's sudden construction happening next door. <laughs> I'm not sure if you can hear them in the background and I do apologize, but I'll just carry on recording, eh? There's actually some differences in the role of a clinical nurse specialist in New Zealand versus in Australia, but this video is super long <laughs> already, so I'll save that for a different video. For now, I just want to focus on the questions that I received from Ruthie, specifically asking about postgraduate studies in New Zealand. So first question, are there postgraduate studies in areas of specialization? My interest is in surgical, perioperative, and anesthesia. So my answer, depending on which school you will enroll, um, there are courses. So for example, for in terms of specialty courses, there's cardiac specialty nursing, critical care, pediatric cardiac specialty in nursing, cancer specialty in nursing, um, registered nurse, first surgical assist, emergency specialty nursing, palliative care specialty nursing, pain nursing, diabetes, pediatric intensive care, ophthalmology, practicum for our designated prescribers, pediatric intensive care, periop nursing specialty, frailty and aged care nursing, and specialty nursing practicum for critical care specialty nursing. So there's definitely specialty courses and I think you'll just have to um, look up different course handbook because some of the courses are only available every other year So it's not always available each year now for the second question Would you suggest institutions that these courses are offered so that I can interact with them? I've really been trying to google the universities, but I can't seem to find any so in terms of school if you are thinking of applying for this funding um, then you actually have to find tertiary providers who are accredited by Health Workforce New Zealand or the Health Workforce Directorate. And I don't have the full list, but to name a few, um, some examples would be Auckland University, Eastern Institute of Technology, Massey University, University of Auckland, University of Otago, Victoria University of Wellington, Waikato Institute of Technology, and this is the list that I have from December 2019. Not sure if they have updated this. And for your reference, I completed my postgraduate degree at University of Auckland. So for the third question, how long do master's program take? Um, in my experience, it, it really depends if you are going to study full-time or part-time. So for me, it took two years uh, before I completed my postgraduate diploma. And then I had one year break because I work in a senior designated role. And that first year of transitioning from working on the floor versus being handed over organizational responsibilities, it's really a big transition. So I knew right there and then that I wouldn't be able to study and work at the same time and know that I've given like 100% of what I can. And so yeah. So after one year of break, I studied part-time and it took another two years before I completed my master's program. So in total, it took four years of studying part-time, or if you want to include my one-year break, that it took five years altogether. So obviously, life didn't stop in that five years. I still traveled with my boyfriend at that time, now husband. We especially love South Island, Queenstown, Dunedin, and we enjoyed traveling within Midland region up to Auckland and far north. And we also visited Wellington on few occasions. Life didn't stop in that five years. I still work while studying. I've worked full-time most of the time, but I think the best FTE for me was when I decreased to 0.8 FTE and I just picked up extra shifts if I am short financially. Life didn't stop in that five years. I ended up planning a wedding, getting married, buying our first home, and becoming pregnant. On my Facebook page, I shared, with God's grace, I was approved for funding for studying part-time. It took four years before I actually completed the master's program, so I actually had to apply for funding each year. There's no grade to maintain like in the Philippines as long as you complete your paper or course every semester, that's that. And someone asked, 
And just to clarify, regarding proceeding to master's from postgraduate diploma, don't you need to get B plus average grades? So to answer that question, in terms of um, health workforce electric funding, there's no minimum grade requirement that you have to maintain. In the Philippines, at least how I remembered it, when I received scholarship funding, there is a minimum grade that you have to maintain. So for example, 80 plus in average. If the health workforce rhetoric funding as long as you meet the eligibility requirements and your application for funding was approved you don't really have to maintain a grade per se however in order to enroll in a master's program tertiary providers do have a minimum gpa requirement and just to emphasize not everyone who will apply for funding will get funding so i am very fortunate and beyond grateful that my tuition was covered but for my friend for example he completed his master's degree without any funding so that meant he had to pay for everything we both studied in university of auckland and we became classmates in our pharmacology paper and i think he was working at auckland hospital during that time he was actually one semester ahead of me so he graduated earlier than i did and for your reference within the master's program you can actually choose between thought versus research we both chose research he did a thesis and i completed a research portfolio and as a side note, if you are thinking of becoming a nurse practitioner, just know that there is a slightly uh, different process altogether. If this video gets 50 likes, I will create a video specifically about that. Now, with the DHP restructure and website updates, I actually had difficulty finding the dedicated web page about Health Workforce Directorate funding. Um, but I did find a site for Tefatuora Waikato and Tefatuora Capital Coast and Hat Valley. And depending again depending on the district which you are working you will have to refer to their specific website and also do take note that funding for Waikato for next school year has already closed and funding for Wellington will close soon so you may not have enough time to prepare for this application but if not this year you know I hope that this video will still be useful for you for your plans in the future or if you are like my friend and you are really willing to spend and invest on your postgraduate study then this might be something that you want to do Question of the day which nursing specialty are you most interested in I am passionate about stroke and neurology how about you let me know in the comment section below I'm also passionate about further studies and you know growing yourself through education and I also like to explore funding and scholarship opportunities because when I was still in the Philippines when I graduated from high school it was not always granted that I will enroll or complete a bachelor's degree because we did struggle financially so i'm really grateful that we have program like this i started writing on my diary march 4 2004 there i wrote march 4 2004 last three days were so very difficult to me but okay lang i think it's worth it naman hence it is my sincerest prayer that even though you are struggling today i hope one day You'll look back in this experience and say to yourself, it was all worth it. I wish you all the best with your journey and I hope you will be blessed. I'll see you soon. Bye! Live a life every day, let it die. 